apologies in advance for the audio throughout this entire video. I don't have a non lapel mic and so anytime that I'm vlogging I'm just using the audio from this camera which is not great. <laughs> apologies for the extremely tall hair. You're just gonna have to deal with that today. Uh, so I'm about five days out from my TED talk. TEDx talk. You're not supposed to I guess say that you're doing a TED talk unless you're doing an actual TED talk, which makes sense. Um, and I would definitely say that I am starting to freak out. Never done this vlogging thing before. I didn't realize how much your arms get tired, um, which is sad because I can like clean and jerk 140 pounds, but I can't hold a two pound camera for like five minutes. Um, but yeah, I think I think it's just really important that people like understand the systems they interact with. And I think that AI literacy is going to be the next, like computer literacy, digital literacy, the next thing that people are going to have to really understand in order to be able to navigate the world. Um, and so that's what my talk's on. That's a really long-winded way of giving you my talk. Uh, and this video is going to be, I guess, a vlog um, of the week leading up Okay, off to do another draft of it and then also do my homework and do some research stuff. It's gonna be a long night, every night this week. It is Wednesday, so I'm officially, I guess, three days out of this talk. And I just got back from a speaker session. The guys who run the speaking street are really great about providing sessions for you to get feedback on your talk, which has been super helpful for me. Um, so I got a lot of good feedback. There's one guy who, just never really likes the talk, but that's okay. Um, it's at least useful in both knowing which battles I want to pick and which I don't. Because at the end of the day, like you do a talk and not everyone's gonna like it in the first place. So if he's the only one who doesn't, then honestly I can leave with that. Interestingly, the hard part about this, which I think a lot of people say the hard part about writing a TED talk is kind of figuring out what the actionable thing that you want people to do is. And that hasn't actually been the hard part for me. Uh, the harder part has really been figuring out how to hook the audience. So one of the things that they recommended was to avoid potentially controversial topics or political topics. But when you're talking about AI, it's like inherently political in a lot of ways. The original example I was using was basically HireVue, the company that makes that facial recognition technology that companies are using to basically process large numbers of pre-recorded video interviews to pick candidates. And a lot of the controversy around it has been essentially around the fact that people who are neurodiverse, particularly people who have conditions like autism, uh, don't express emotion in the same way that the average person does and would just inherently get lower scores than everyone else when using a software like that. And I thought that that was the least political I could get. There are definitely other examples that I could have used, like last week's video um, on like sexism and credit card algorithms, but it's hard to find an example of something that doesn't tie back to discrimination against some group or unfair treatment against some group, even if it isn't necessarily like gender or race. So I think I got a good um, recommendation from one of the guys who runs TEDx Speak and Treat uh, for an example that I might be able to use that's a little bit less controversial. But at the same time, the only person who seems to think this example is controversial is that one guy who just hates this talk every time he hears it. So I don't know, we'll see. But otherwise, uh, definitely getting nervous, we're getting close. Uh, it's been a super busy week with just other stuff. So uh, honestly, at this point, I'm looking forward to doing it, getting that 10-ish minutes on the stage, and then studying for the neuroscience exam that I have on Monday. So it is the day before I am scheduled to give this talk. I just have to finish up my slides and basically keep practicing it until tomorrow. The only problem is that my department, wow, this is both terrible lighting and also I look terrible. My department had their semesterly dinner, so we have usually a fall dinner and a spring dinner. And it's a lot of fun, because um, 
a lot of people from my cohort go and we get to hang out and it's free dinner and free booze. But I don't know if something at the dinner just didn't sit well in my stomach or if I like actually caught something, but I woke up this morning feeling absolutely terrible. So I'm hoping that it will either pass today or that I'll be able to just take the like 10 minutes to give the talk tomorrow morning and then basically get back in bed. Uh, Cause I would really rather not have spent all of this time prepping for this talk and not be able to give it because I got like a food bug or something. So we'll see what happens, but all things considered, um, I'm definitely feeling a lot better than I did um, two days ago which was the last time I vlogged. I've had some time to kind of sit with it and look at what the main points that I want to get across are um, and the context of some of the feedback that I've gotten to make sure that I'm kind of hitting on all the points that I wanted to hit on. So it's tomorrow. Um, yeah, it's exciting. It is actually two days after I gave my TED talk. It's Monday, I gave the talk on Saturday. It's mostly two days because I basically slept all of Saturday and Sunday and then had an exam that I also had to study for. So I took a little break from filming from YouTube. That way I could, I mean, this isn't really a break from YouTube. Like people take like months off of YouTube, but I took a little break just to like regroup. So overall, I'm, I'm glad that I did this. I applied, I guess, for this with the goal of pushing myself out of my comfort zone, just like I make these videos, just like I do topics or try to cover topics that I think are a little bit more challenging to cover because I want to get better at them. Um, and just like how I cover topics on this channel, that's not always perfect. And so I wasn't, I won't say I wasn't expecting my TED talk to be perfect. I have anxiety that's derived from a tendency towards perfectionism, so I always want everything to be perfect. Um, and I think that that was why this was both a good goal for me in terms of stretching my comfort zone with public speaking, um, but also with just realizing that, you know, the talk's not always gonna be perfect. There is actually a moment if you watch the raw live stream footage, which well, I'll include a link in the description, but also in a pinned comment that has a link to the live stream with the timestamp of when my talk is, because it's a 12 hour live stream. Unless you want to watch the whole thing, that's up to you. And there's a part in my talk where I don't mess up. I guess I do mess up. I start a sentence and then realize I've messed it up and pause and go back and redo it. And that was the worst case scenario for me. Every time I was practicing this, I was going over it uh, the night before, the morning of, and there were just a couple spots where I would always stumble a little bit and I couldn't seem to break that. And so my biggest fear of this whole thing was that I was going to do that on stage. And I did. And it helped me be a little bit more comfortable with that because at the end of the day, I still walked off stage. Everyone still seemed to like it. Um, I'm still, I'm extremely self-critical. So so I think that if I did this again, um, I would definitely, there are things that I can see that I could see even before I give the talk that I would like to improve. And I just didn't have the time um, because of a lot of things. But I think that it seemed like everyone else liked it a lot. Um, and I think that for, you know, my first venture into public speaking where, you know, there's someone behind the camera where I can't necessarily see my face on the screen as I'm filming and where I can't edit it, you know, it's, it's live, it's in real time. And while the professional cut that they're gonna release in a couple weeks will be edited to remove uh, the place where I stumbled over my words a little bit, you know, in that moment, it was live and so, getting more comfortable with both doing the thing, going up in front of a ton of people and speaking on things that I'm passionate about, but also being comfortable with the fact that it's not always gonna come out perfect. So let's do a quick recap of this journey. So for those curious, uh, TEDx conferences, I guess they call them, 
are regional, they're locally run, so they're affiliated with the big TED, but only basically through branding, not necessarily through like funding or anything like that. The way that it works from TEDx Week Institute at least is that you apply to give a talk on a certain topic. They have a form online and you can just fill it out and then they'll reach out to you if you are interested, if they're interested in having you give the talk. So I applied, I think over the summer, um, and I pitched a talk on AI literacy and why I think it's really important um, based on both, you know, my background as someone who develops AI algorithms, but also as someone who does this, um, who, who talks to you guys through this camera. And they were interested in having me. Um, so for our TEDx, the way it works is that there are, we have these things called speaker sessions. Um, so basically once a week to once every other week, there would be a place where you could go and you could share your ideas or run through your talk and get feedback from people. You go through these speaker sessions and you refine your talk. And I probably wrote about 12 drafts of this talk um, with the, the last one being written on Wednesday. Um, and I think what the, the part that I found, well, there are many parts that I found hard about this, but the part that I think was the hardest for me was that one of the things that they try to get you to do in a TED talk is to really get your message down to a single phrase. Um, what do you want people to walk out of the room knowing? And it took me a really long time to get down to a phrase. I had like a sentence, but it was like a sentence that had like multiple clauses. And it wasn't until I kind of got down to the idea that like, I think that AI literacy is the new computer literacy. Like we all had to learn how to go from, you know, paper to computers, how to learn how to use Skype, how to learn how to send an email how to learn how to engage with social media because it's really, really hard to live in the world right now without having those skills and having that, not technical knowledge, just like general literacy around that technology. And so the, the goal of my talk, the main takeaway that I want people to get was the idea that AI is the next thing that we're gonna have to do that for. It's the next thing where people aren't necessarily gonna know like the fine details of how it's working but are going to need to know how to interact with it and need to use it in their day-to-day -day lives, which is like the whole point of this channel, obviously. Um, and so it took me until last week to really nail that down a sentence. Um, and after that, writing the talk got a little bit easier because I could really focus in on the message that I wanted to get across. Um, but that's the video. This one's a little bit more vloggy, especially since it's Thanksgiving, the day after Thanksgiving, it's Black Friday. Um, I don't have any merch, so you can't buy it. It's not on sale, sorry, but maybe one day. Um, but I thought that this would be a nice kind of more chill vlog of like my experiences giving uh, a TED talk and yeah, how that went and how that was. And again, if you wanna watch the raw cut um, from the live stream, there will be links down below. Um, and then I'll also post when there's the full professional fancy cut of it, uh, which should be by the end of the year. I can like officially say by the end of the year and it's like not that long from now. Wow, weird. So if you like this vlog style video, let me know in the comments. Um, I can do more occasional vlogs, I guess. It's definitely a bit more chill than having to research a whole video. Also, if you watch my TED talk and you have thoughts on what I should title it, leave your thoughts down below because I have to send them a title and I didn't come up with a title for it before I gave it. So yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do there. Uh, otherwise, thank you so much to all of my patrons for supporting me and this channel. If you'd like to become a patron, you get access to my fortnightly, every other week, every, two, two a month, two a month uh, vlogs, as well as the monthly Q&A live stream and a bunch of other behind the scenes content. So you can check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash everydayai. Otherwise, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.